I acknowledge that electric vehicles, EVs, boast superior torque and speed compared to internal combustion engine, IC, cars, but I'll miss the visceral experience of a gasoline engine's sound and intensity. Unfortunately for those holding on to this sentiment, our recent test drive of Hyundai's 641 horsepower Ionic 5N has just obliterated that seemingly rational anti-EV argument. Where's the engine, anyway? This goes beyond the typical simulated engine noises played through speakers, though. Yes, the Ionic 5N has those, including a gas engine soundtrack that rivals top-notch computer racing simulators. The game changer is a feature called in e shift apparently not pronounced any shift based on the puzzled glances we received from the engineers utilizing a clever combination of motor torque and regenerative braking in e shift imparts the sensation more feel than sound of a twin clutch automatic transmission the physical feedback it delivers is indistinguishable from hyundai's own dual clutch transmission dcd complete with some of its less than refined behaviors like a jolt in response to an untimely shift the digital dashboard showcases an 8,000 RPM tachometer, and the acceleration mirrors the torque curve of a four-cylinder turbo engine. It even simulates hitting a virtual limiter, halting acceleration if the driver forgets to paddle up. Paired with the synthesized engine sounds, the effect is remarkably authentic. You might almost convince yourself that Hyundai managed to fit one of its in-spec turbo engines into the spacious Ionic 5, our SUV of the year for 2023 software's limitless potential. Almost. Admittedly, an e-shift may be a frivolous gimmick that undermines the primary advantage of an electric performance car, immediate access to an endless well of torque. However, it serves as a testament. A team of adept software engineers armed with a touch of creativity can make an EV behave in nearly any way a car enthusiast desires. Well, almost any way. Another standout feature of the Ionic 5 is the in-drift optimizer. If you detect a theme, you're correct, Hyundai has a fixed in to nearly every aspect of the Ionic 5 in. We wouldn't be surprised if the door handles were labeled in-cabin access enablers. Hyundai asserts that this feature facilitates easy drifting for beginners. Our attempt on a wet skid pad, however, resulted in an inability to sustain a drift. The car either spun out or straightened, despite diligently following the instructions barked by Hyundai's engineers, or should we say, engineers, over the walkie-talkie. None of the fellow journalists joining our session managed to execute a drift, and even the engineer who claimed to design the system for novices couldn't sustain more than a fleeting moment of oversteer. Interestingly, we did witness an Ionic 5 going full tailout, driven by a skilled drifter with the in-drift optimizer turned off. Nevertheless, the Ionic 5 in software boasts several impressive features, such as granting the driver the ability to program the torque split. This, too, bears an uninspired name, in torque distribution. The Ionic 5 North allows you to drive with 100% of its power originating from the rear motor, experience a balanced 50-50 split, or, for those inclined towards understeer, engage front-wheel drive mode. Let it unleash its potential. Among all the other in gadgets, our most enjoyable experiences, both on the track at the Korea International Circuit and on the road, occurred when we simply engaged the car in its spirited in mode, disabled the in e shift and in active sound plus, simulated engine noises, and allowed the Ionic 5 in to perform as it pleased. And what it delivered was nothing short of delightful. Building upon the inherently playful nature of the EGMP platform, the Sporty 5 willingly rotated in the curves with a gradual and easily recoverable manner. The chassis exhibited a pleasing balance, and the Pirelli P0 tires, 235-35 or 21, provided ample grip. The steering, offering reasonable communication, allowed for fingertip control and feedback reception. The brakes, felt through the pedal, were exceptional. Hyundai underwent extensive revisions here, particularly in the combination of regenerative and friction braking. Interestingly, the driver won't notice. The brake pedal functions as expected, comparable to any high-performance car. If anything, the Ionic 5 proved a tad too easy to push to the limit. Even without engaging the in-grin boost button to unlock the full 641 horsepower, the otherwise 601 horsepower Ionic 5 in accelerated so rapidly that we often found ourselves entering corners at much higher speeds than intended. The silent powertrain masked the swift acceleration, 
highlighting how much we rely on auditory cues while driving. Perhaps those artificial engine noises aren't just a gimmick after all. Elevating the electric experience. In summary, the Ionic 5 and emerges as an impressive track machine, and its performance on winding roads is commendable as well. Limited opportunities to push its limits on public streets, thanks to Korea's strict speed limits and law-abiding local drivers, didn't diminish the brilliance of the chassis. This is especially noteworthy when considering the vehicle's hefty 2-ton-plus SUV stature or simply appreciating the sheer size of the machine. That's because Hyundai's N engineers went beyond simply increasing power and tweaking lines of code. The N variant of the Ionic 5 boasts a plethora of hardware enhancements compared to the standard model. These include the incorporation of a modified version of the Genesis GV60's front suspension, a new steering gear, and reinforcement of the body shell through additional welds and adhesive. The motor and battery cooling systems also received upgrades, complemented by user-selectable modes designed to optimize temperatures for both drag and track use. The latter is configured for 20 minutes of track performance followed by a 20-minute cool-down period, an aspect that might be wielded by anti-EV enthusiasts as evidence of internal combustion engine superiority. And, well, they aren't entirely wrong. The technology is undoubtedly still evolving. On real-world roads, the ride of the Ionic 5N is noticeably firmer compared to the standard 5, but it's not uncomfortably so. However, the substantial Pirelli tires do generate enough noise on certain road surfaces to overshadow the synthesized engine sounds. One notable feature of gas-powered in-cars is the ability to disable all high-performance features for a more comfortable commute. The Ionic 5N requires less taming in this regard, even in N-mode. It doesn't exhibit the punishing stiffness found in the Elantra N and the Veloster N, though that's perfectly fine, as those cars tend to excel in their second-to-last chassis setting when navigating curvy roads. Areas for improvement in the Ionic 5N. Complaints? Well, there's the inherent complexity in activating the various N features, not only through the central screen but also with the multitude of buttons added to the steering wheel. Despite the cheat sheet Hyundai provided, a set of a dozen index cards, we found it challenging to keep all the functions straight. While owners may become more familiar with them over time, we'd recommend at least a three-year lease just to be on the safe side. Another significant gripe is with iPedal, Hyundai's one-pedal driving mode. The majority of braking occurs at the top of the accelerator pedal's travel, making modulation difficult. Conversely, the in-pedal function, intended for enthusiastic driving, seem to lack sufficient regen on the track, although it's entirely possible we overlooked a setting in the abundance of in-menus. In summary, our impressions after this test drive align with our previous experiences at the Nürburgring and in Thanks snowy for conditions. Watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.